The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in, on Amazon. The Mike Wagner Show, also brought to you by Illuminatical, the think tank of the future. The Sweet Summits by Serena Wagner, available on Amazon. Highlighting the book of David and Heidi Tam Music, with her latest on HeidiTamMusic.com. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Soundwave, the warring author, Mia Molson Zia, also brought to you by Illuminatical, the think tank of the future, and the sweet songs by Serena Wagner, based on the life of David on Amazon, also Heidi Tan Music, check out her latest at HeidiTanMusic.com. We're here with two terrific people who's an American singer, actress, author, um, spanning 45 plus years and began her career after her father knows her natural talent for music and enrolled her for... Um, the uh, piano lessons and more voice lessons, violin, stay with Eleanor Boaz of Boaz Studios, and um, later on, uh, earned her business degree and business admin and marketing. Also has a new book out portraying the um, the untarnished truth of life with her dad, the life and times of her dad, mm. Frank Price, Chico Baker, and including dreams of Major League Baseball, which you all love. Later, um, you know, you know, getting into uh, wealth, women, fast cars, and um, legal trials, tribulations, and the American justice system. And, of course, uh, also backed by a wonderful um, actor and uh, amazing uh, talent of uh, Friday the 13th, um, Killer Clowns, Lost Ships, Sleepers, Skate to Hell, and more. Live, ladies and gentlemen, we are going on the East Coast. Good evening, from, everybody. From Jacksonville and Hello. also Hello. New York City. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Nice to be here, my By friend. the way, they're, they're so excited to be on. I didn't get to mention the names. We have the multi-talented Rhonda Baker Starsbury, best known as Belita King, the Belita Princess, and also Vinny Moyo from New York City. Guys, good morning. Good afternoon. Good go. evening. Hello, hello, Thank hello. you very much for joining us. And thanks, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's great to have you guys on board. So let's uh, start. Okay, let's see. I don't, I don't know where to start with first. but It's oh, good to I be on goddamn board. Meeny, meeny, money, mocha. Oh, Rhonda, here we go. So you're All an American right. singer, actress, author, spending 45 plus years in beginning career after your father, natural. Notice your local talent for music. You she enrolled. You got enrolled for piano lessons and also voice lessons. You also stay with Eleanor Boaz of Boaz Studios, and uh, you also modeled for uh, Barbizon. And you also later became the Bolita Princess. You earned your business degree in business administration and marketing. You have a new book out, which is called Number Thirty Five and Fifty Three to Case, which portrays the untarnished truth of life and times of your dad, Frank Price Chico Baker. And yes. Um, Yes, we do. Yeah. And of course, um, Vinny, you've also been an actor for quite some time in New York City. You're in The Lost Ships, Sleepers, Skate to Hell, Friday the 13th, most notably, Killer Clowns and more. And before well, we got, all- you know, we got Mike, we got Magical Mystery Time. That's going to be nice. That's with Brooke Halpin out there where Rhonda lives. Well, actually, west of us, but Brooke Halpin putting together Magical Mystery Time is going to be wonderful. Oh, nice. That's okay. A bit, that's a bit of a all right. story about the Beatles and his life with the Beatles. But- we got Ron, they were kick, kicking it up a notch with all her stuff going on. and That's, <laughs> that's great. I, okay. I'm well, excited to hear a little bit about her story, too, just as you are tonight. To sounds see great. Okay. Before, yeah, there we go. We'll get to yours in just a minute before getting there, Rhonda. Tell us how you first got started. Oh, let's see. I was born here in Jacksonville, Florida um, in 1959. Uh, my father uh-huh. uh, initially started out to be a pro ball player. He was selected by the Kansas City Monarchs for their training camp, met every goal but one. Mm-hmm. At the end of the training camp, they told him, no, we cannot release you to play. You have vitiligo. He had such a severe case of vitiligo that he could not stand the sun. He had no pigmentation in his Ooh. skin. And that tanked his career. Oh. So didn't finish college. Wife and child. What do you do? in the South when the minimum wage was $1 an hour in Really? $1 an hour? Oh, my goodness. I think we should be thankful with our minimum <laughs> wage or try to. 
So he decided, okay, I can't do this. You know, he had goals, he had aspirations. And he was introduced to the Bolita game, the numbers racket. They call them racketeers, numbers runners in the 50s, late 50s. And this is how he decided to make a living. Um, Although it's illegal, it was illegal, um, he did it anyway. And he massed a fortune, massed a lot of legal troubles, trials and tribulations, uh, three federal cases. Um, he did he die, did die at an early age of 47 with a heart attack. Mm. Um, stress will kill you. Oh, and yes. I think it, I think many of us should understand that. You know, if I cannot preach anything but that, I will tell you stress will kill you. Oh, um, yes. And one of the things that he said, I remember so vividly when I was 10 years old, when his last federal case was over, he said, I think I'm going to write a book. And he never pursued writing that book. And I decided to take that on. And Aww. that's when I started writing the book. 6.30 on a Saturday morning, March 28th. And I looked up at the calendar and I said, oh, my goodness, this is his birthday. This is divine. And I started, I interviewed a multitude of people wow. um, regarding how the numbers operation. Like from out. where? In the South area? Where did you interview well, them? I interviewed them right here in Jacksonville because this is wow. where my father's operation was in Jacksonville. Um, they were extremely big. Um, like I said, he masked a fortune. Um, he was what they called a banker because he was backing the numbers. Mm. People, just like you go and you play, he was the person that you went to and said, I want to play 25. I want to play 53. I want to play 75. It's just like it is now. The government only copied the lottery from, from them. Mm. That's a copycat game. Right. So so basically the government just uh, simply got it from um your dad, that organization all along Bolita 3553. They copied it from that organization. Is that right? They copied it because there are multiple like there are wow. multiple games in the lottery. There were multiple games in the numbers game. You would have the night house, you would have the Cuba, you would have the total, okay, and you would have games that would hail out of Cuba. Bolita hails out of Cuba. In Spanish, bolita means little ball. This little why, little ball or little ball? Ball, B-A-L-L. -L, okay. Little ball. This is where you reach into a bag and you pull out a number. And what the number is, is what is called the number. So if you pull out 35, that is the number. So now you've got people that have bet $5, $20. And it paid $65 to the dollar. Wow. So think about even if you just played $1 back in 59, that was $65. That was your rent. Oh, my God. So basically, you just like you worked a dollar an hour that you put in a dollar. It's basically just putting your hour's wage. Right. Wow. So you would have people that would pay, play $50 on a number. So you multiply that. So what was your father's day like? I mean, did he did he leave at 5 a.m. and get back no. at midnight? Or did he come Daddy, and go? No, he no. What do you think, Mike? You think day. he'd be able to have that flexibility? Uh, you know, that's, make his own schedule? I, I, I don't know. That's hard to say. I never lived the lottery life, to be honest with you. I got lucky yeah. in some other ways, but I was going to throw another yeah. question at you, too. Uh, what's the significance between, with um, 35 and 53 in the book? What's the significance well, of it? What the, different, the thing is, that was my father's pet number, but after I finished writing the book, my cousin, Stell, who was like my mother, she said they were both born in 1935, but they were delivered by midwives. So in my book, I say my father's birth date is March 28, 1936, when that was not true. It was actually 1935. Hmm. So he used those as his numbers. 35, and you always flip the number when you're gambling to 53. So if 35 came out, everybody knew that was Frank's pet number. And my father would play 50, 60, $500 on a number a week. 
you know, I, I tell people, I remember one day I was laying in the floor and I'm just listening. I was so nosy. And I heard him say, I just caught for $50,000. Wow. And he was telling it to my grandmother. And his, his, his problem was, I can't bank this money. So he had to divvy the money up, put it in a safe, put it with my aunt, put it with my grandmother so it would be safe. Okay. Were, were the uh, were the um, bank regulations uh, in effect at that time, too, with the FDIC? It, it, it's covered for $100,000. Was it covered uh, by the F- FDIC at the time, or was it considered no, illegal or unsafe? It was illegal. What it's called is wagering of taxes. That is what the federal crime is. Wagering of taxes. You are earning money from gambling, but you're not paying the taxes on it, and you don't have uh, a, a FEI in number. So basically, you are running numbers. You're taking bets. My father had a staff of about 21 people that were selling numbers for him. Wow. On Sunday, he would go out and pay just like payroll is on Friday for me. Payroll was on Sunday for his people. Mm. And you got paid based on the amount of uh, Bolita tickets and Bolita that you sold. OK. And, and what was and what was that game that uh, stood out for the government as well, too? There are some other gambling games. But what was it about the government that adopted that system to make it standard? What What's really stood out? Well, when you say stood out, they were able to tax it now. See, it became legal in, in Florida in like 1986. Up until 86, it was illegal. They would put you, let's say, not in jail. They wanted to put you in prison. OK, because there's a big difference between jail and prison. Oh, really? How's and that? The amount of days. Jail is 364 days. Prison is 365 and then some. OK, all right. <laughs> well, that's a number. 364. Maybe that's a good lottery number and running <laughs> too as well, too. That's just running so close. And um, we'll get more in the book with Ronder Baker, um, Stosbury, or best known as Belita King, the Belita Princess with um, number 35 and 53, The Case. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Widener's show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Very and nice. And E-book. Missing, Missing. fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. And he says thank you. It, it takes place in four countries. Two strangers, one target. Where truth is illusion and those who love be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon, a paperback, and ebook. Missing by Mia Melson Zia has got great reviews. In Evil Evan and George by Howard Celebrities, including Jordan Cassie, Forge Riley, and Minnows. So grab your copy today for goals Missing by Mia Melson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show is brought to you by Elum Niptical, the think tank of the future. Elum Niptical, the um, think tank that brings scientists and engineers together from all over the world, creating a method that constructs a renewable generator with this in mind. This unique product uh, offers... Um, operates on a closed-loop system and generates more energy internally than it needs to function. The extra electricity can then be used to run everything from homes and power grids to phones and laptops. This power structure is entirely renewable, highly scalable, and more importantly, self-regenerating. For more information, visit fa- facebook.com slash illuminatical. That's facebook.com slash E-L-L-U-M-E-N-I-P. T-I-C-A-L for more information. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by the Sweet Psalmist by Serena Wagner based on the life of King David, including three exquisite paintings and King David Psalms. The Sweet Psalmist gives us a new perspective of David through the Psalms he wrote and his time as a shepherd were all started. And his complicated and turbulent relationship with King Saul, his story of love, betrayal, repentance, and more. Check out the Sweet Psalmist by Serena Wagner on Amazon. Keyword, Sweet Psalmist Serena Wagner. Also, Check out the Mike Wagner Show on 40, 40 podcast platforms, heard on countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Music, Odyssey, Podbean, Pandora. Subscribe on BitChute, Rumble, YouTube, and more. And take us with you on any mobile device. Follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, and more for great gift ideas. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. Order t-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, 
makes great gifts 24 7 365 for your family and loved ones go to amazon.com check out the mike weiner show podcast and for more great gift ideas go to amazon.com slash mia molson zia for great books like missing once and wrinkles plus t-shirts pop sockets hoodies other merchandise and more amazon.com slash mia molson zia check it out today and support the mike weiner show on anchor fm paypal and the mike weiner show.com well here are two terrific people the um american singer actress and author of the book number 35 and 53 the case Rhonda Baker stars Barry here on the Mike Wagner Show, or best known as Belita King, the Belita Princess. And also a special guest on the line here, we have Vinny Moyo of the Lost Ship, Sleeper, Skate the Hell, Friday the 13th, and Killer Clowns, the um, multi-time actor from New York City. Vinny, just Happy want to, to say here. thanks for Happy joining us. Here, and, uh, Thank you. All right, great. And uh, so, tell, us how you, tell us how you got started. Who, me? Yes, you. Oh, yes, me? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you're on the spotlight this time. Let's give Rhonda a break here. Let's hear about you now. <laughs> Sorry, you got me, Rhonda. I might I don't really know how I got started. I, I just continued. Uh, I just continued. I never really got started. I, I just continued. Continue. You know? That's a good I didn't word. Have okay. To get started. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, it, it started at uh, uh, local theater. Local theaters in my in my uh, you know in the neighborhood I lived in. You know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where my heart told me to go, and that's where I went, and uh, spent a, a, a little bit of time doing that, and, and then moved on to uh, and around the nose, the American Academy, remember the Academy, the Academy on Madison Avenue, you know. So I, I moved on to the uh, the prima, the premier school on Madison Avenue City, and spent some time there, and uh, took their curriculums and worked with some people there. It was great. It was a great set of uh, some learning skills and little behind the scenes things and. Uh, you know, something stands out. Something stands out to me. I can mention, you know, they they taught us uh, they taught us to, to like bring in like two, three outfits one day to, wow. to cl- you know to class. And mm-hmm. normally, you go to two or three, one or two, maybe three different spots to learn a little bit something different every day. You know, you weren't in one class for three hours. It was in and out, but a few different things. They kept it lively. But one of the one of the instructors said, "We'll bring in a couple of outfits." We didn't know why, but the challenge was you had to really change your clothes very, very fast. Mm, I see. <laughs> you know, change your clothes quickly. You know, <laughs> get out of the outfit, get in this one. And, and they just went, it was like a soup to nuts kind of place. You know, they were how much time to instruct. Now, how much time were you allowed to, to change quickly? One second, five seconds, ten seconds? Uh, what was the time you had? I took all day. Plus, I came back with the same clothes on. And I said, I didn't feel like changing. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> I said, oh. yeah, I, I really didn't feel like changing. Like, so I didn't, all right? How about that? Mm, there you go. That's a <laughs> good thing. It took about maybe a couple of minutes to change. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I had the hat on backwards. You know, they're like, yeah, hat's on backwards. I'm like, so sorry. Whoop, turn it around. It creates, a, it creates a different character in you, which is a good thing. That's so. right. <laughs> so it was, a, I tell you, the soup to nuts. So then after that, I just ran into an, an Italian agent around a corner from the Paramount Club, the Paramount office in the building there near Broadway in uh, Midtown somewhere, I guess West Side, maybe maybe 70, 70th or something. And uh, I just I just hammered him until he said, OK, you know what that means, right, Rhonda? I just hammered yes. the guy, stopped in on him all the time, <laughs> calling him, bugging him, you know? Absolutely. And uh, finally, finally, he <laughs> says, well, I tell you what, he writes out a little name on a piece of paper and he goes, get out of here, go see this person. And from there, away <laughs> it went. You know? Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, that, away from there, Mike. Oh my gosh, that's and something. I find myself sitting on a bench in Laguna Beach, uh eleven months later on a bench in a in a traveling play in Laguna Beach, not too far from Betty Davis's uh, house, but so I'm on the bench and, and I we're in I'm in this traveling play and Ron, if you could picture this, this the cast that just moves along and and the and the audience, you know, they just follow you around as the cast moves. You, you get followed around by the, the people watching the, the play, right? And um so I happened to sit down on a bench next to a woman. I didn't really know exactly who she was, you know, but uh, and uh, we continued on our, our spiel for the day. And when, when we were done, the play uh, we, afterwards, um, I'm walking across the parking lot with a casting agent, uh, some woman, you know, a nice lady, a Russian lady, actually, um, who uh, was very, very nice. But she said to me, you know who you're sitting? She whispered next to me. She said, you know who you were sitting next to on the bench? And of course, I was like, no, no. And it was uh, Buddy Epson, one of his one of Buddy's uh, ex wives. Oh wow! On wow. the bench. So, in other words, it, right? And who was she? Yeah, who was she living with? It was exciting, right? She was living at the time, uh, residing in L.A., Hollywood, Beverly Hills area. 
uh, with uh, one of the Golden Girls uh, writers, James Tompkins, the second oh, wow. writer for the Golden okay. Girls. So they were still together and working, doing big projects. And, uh, you know, they were um, just hanging out and doing their thing. And I lived with them for a while. And uh, we did some projects out there. Uh, I got into the studio uh, with Kim Fields, you know, and um, she was working on a gospel album with her mom, Chip. Nice. And uh, they asked me if I could sing. And I said, well, yeah, you know, I could sing. And so when they found out I could, once I was in the booth in the studio, then we went ahead and spent some time uh, doing some vocals on some children's gospel album she was working on with her mom. So that was a lot of fun. And we did a few other things. Uh, I toured some of the studios out there. I met some friends and uh, things like that. And um, I did a few things. And then I, I found myself on the sets of Chuck Norris about six, nice. eight, seven months later, six, six months later, all around New York City, New Jersey, the East Coast, um, uh, Manhattan, uh, a couple of Chuck Norris production sets. And I tell you, his 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 uh, his, his productions were really interesting. Uh, they were really interesting to work on. It was one of the first big sets I worked on was a couple of different productions. With Chuck. Um, first, we take Manhattan and Sudden Change. And that's what just what I was told was the name of the films, but I I was told they were released in the UK, and I never really followed up on it, so I don't know. Ah, what happened okay. I really don't know what happened uh, if they merged into something else, which is possible. But that was a lot of fun, and his people were very interesting. His uh, Oriental directors and uh, Asian guys, and it was a lot of fun. And I did some I did some upfront scene work there, uh, which was a, a lot of fun uh, in Manhattan and New Jersey. So and then from wow. there, it, it, I kind of fell out of the business, and then I'm getting back in as of the last year or two, and it's. It's just taken off like a rocket, you know. Thank God there's a lot of great people around here. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, Rhonda so knows amazing. all about great people. You know, she's one of the best, right? The best of the best of yourself. Oh, my uh, gosh, so there's yeah. A lot, there's a lot of folks that will actually, um, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, just, you know, you know like-minded, like-minded people that, that just it, say, well, let's, let's, let's get on. Let's get oh, on. This. And that's very I did everything without really a real. I didn't have a real. <clears throat> I, I genuinely just auditioned. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite actors? I, just growing up? I passed all the auditions. It was fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are some of your favorite actors growing up? What? Your favorite actors growing up. Who are some of your favorites? Oh, really? Um, well, you know, Burt Reynolds was pretty funny. He was old, you know, he's it was older than me at the time, you know. But Burt Reynolds was kind of funny. I'd be like him. And um, um who else? I mean, well, there's Al, right? There's Al, big Al. Mm -hmm. Al Pacino, right? Yeah. Um, and um you know, other than that, you know, I don't know. Uh -huh. it, it sounds like a lot, too. And, of course, uh, Rhonda, you've uh, been in the business as well, too. And um, who are some of your favorite artists, singers, songwriters, musicians, actors, and oh. everybody like that growing up? Oh, my goodness. I love okay, Dakota <laughs> State, Nancy Wilson, Ella Fitzgerald, Patty Page. Ella I mean, I Fitzgerald, wow. Days. Um, Billy Eckstein, um... In fact, Charlie Haas Singleton is a distant relative. He wrote Spanish Eyes. Um, oh, really? Who is that? Really? Charlie Haas Singleton. Yes. Um, oh, my goodness. I could go on. Wow, Spanish Eyes. Wow. With the music, uh, big band era. You know, that's what I learned to sing from. Um, my father picked out all of my what they called sheet music back then. Mm -hmm. and sheet so, music. <laughs> so every week when it was time for me to go to voice lessons, he would hand me a piece of sheet music. It would be Earl Garner's Misty or something that Duke Ellington sat and doll, take the A train. And here I am, nine years old, trying to belt out these songs. Wow. OK. You know? <laughs> so I grew up around music and theory and acting, modeling, you know, diction, enunciation. He wanted me to have the best. If I wanted to be in this business, he wanted oh, yes. me to be prepared. Right. Oh, yeah. That's the best indeed. You also modeled for Barbizon for a while. For Barbizon. I'm a Barbizon graduate in 1976. So he wanted me to hold, have the total package and nice. then wanted me to and, also. And you do. You have, you have the total package. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, darling. Thank you. So I just, I love music. I love writing, you know. Um, so I wrote the book. Then I wrote a script. I sat down and took six months and wrote a script. My daughter, Tony Dion, and my cousin, Ahmad Evans, we wrote the script. So now we are um, working with a producer and we're looking for funding for numbers 35 and 53 is what mm -hmm. the movie is. That the name, is that the name of the movie? That the, the, the name of the movie? Um, 
I tell people a lot, the name of the book is Numbers 35 and 53, right. the case of the brown paper bag. And as I tell people, my father was involved in multiple federal cases. And one of the attorneys, uh, Earl Johnson, who is actually Dr. Martin Luther King's attorney, he ah. says, so why don't we just call this the case of the brown paper bag, since you all think that a brown paper bag is the hallmark of the numbers game. And every man that you see running from tavern to tavern, you know, walking the streets is a numbers runner, mm-hmm. which, they, which they were, you know. <laughs> but, um, so that's how it, the, I came up with the name numbers 35 and 53, the case of the brown paper bag. Okay, that sounds good. Never seen too. And uh, how did you two uh, first meet and uh, collaborate? From from for the book, uh, for for book and everything in general. How did you and uh, how did you and Vinny first meet? We met at the luxury gala back in March. Right. We were Seven sitting months at ago, the same, whatever. Yeah, we were sitting at the same table, you know, and we were talking and just sometimes people click. And we were that 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 two people that clicked. We were having know? a blast. We were having a blast. You know, like it you was know? like we missed that? you, Mike. You could have been there too. Yeah, it was like oh, uh, you know Rosa? something. I wish somebody would have sent me some numbers to do that. You know, here's thirty five dollars, fifty three dollars, three hundred fifty dollars, three hundred thirty dollars, three five hundred dollars, fifty three hundred. I could have been there. You know, uh, maybe I should play a lottery with those numbers, thirty five, fifty three. <laughs> hey, let me know. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, growing up, um, the daughter of a numbers runner, they, you know, calling him a racketeer, you know, a banker. Um, he was really a really nice, gentle giant and very well respected. I tell people, I said, sometimes I didn't even like going places with my father because it was like a whisper. There's Frank. There's Frank in the room. And you would think that the president had just walked in the room because of all the respect he got. And I'm like, oh, my God, there's Frank, there's Frank, there's Chico. Hi. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, you people are nuts. Mm-hmm. But like, 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 like the Don walked in, the CEO, president and exactly. all that. Exactly. And people just loved him. And when I went on this journey to write this book, I must have interviewed 30 people. Wow. And I asked them, I said, I want the entire story because although he was a numbers runner, this was illegal. I want to know what type of person he was in the street. Mm -hmm. And the same person he was at home, he was in the street. They said, Frank is so kind. Frank is so generous, you know. And one guy came over and he was sitting in my office. And I was talking to him and I said, you know, tell me. And I never met this man before in my life. His name is Major Baker. They call him Hotshot. And I said, tell me what. Yeah, I said, tell me what you know. And I want the truth. And he started to tell me some things. And one thing he told me, he says, Rhonda, I would not be the man I am today if it was not for your dad. You you know, and I looked at him and I said, can you excuse me for just a minute? And I went to the bathroom and I cried because I said, here is someone that was a major person in my father's life. And I didn't know him. This was someone from what we call the east side of Jacksonville, where my dad grew up. And it was a very tight community. You know, um, it was self-contained growing up in East Jacksonville. They didn't have to go out of the neighborhood to get anything. Shoes, clothes, everything was on that strip on Florida Avenue. Wow. So um, Bob Hayes and my dad were the best of friends. They went to high school together. You know, he came out of East Jacksonville. General Bob Hayes. Bob Hayes. Bob, Hayes, Bob Bullet Hayes. Cowboys, yeah. Oh, Dallas Cowboys. I was sitting oh, asking about that. The wide receiver. Okay, I thought Bob Hayes, Bob Hayes. Okay, I was thinking Dallas okay. Cowboys. I'm thinking yeah. maybe the Washington Bullets or something mm-hmm. like that. But I'm glad you clarified. It. Bob, Bob Bullet Hayes and my dad were as thick as thieves. I mean, they, bo- they both came out of the <laughs> And you know, um, General Emmett Page, um, four-star general, East Jacksonville. My dad's first cousin. Um, 
their mothers were sisters. So a lot of very, very knowledgeable, intelligent people came out of East Jacksonville. Um, my father would have been a pro ball player. He was a catcher. They ranked his catching skills with Roy Campanella. Mm, you know, nice. So he was he big was name. Yeah. Awesome. Um, just having vitiligo. And I don't know what, if you know what vitiligo is, where you lose the pigmentation in your skin. This disease started with him at the age of 10 wow. or 11. Uh -huh. By the time he was in his 20s, he was, you know, totally almost white. He only had a few um, dark places. And what he did was he was reading a newspaper article, a magazine article, doctor in Washington, D.C. has cure for vitiligo patient. So normally what I would have done was I would have gotten up and the next day it made me an appointment to go to D.C. Instead, Frank made him airline reservations, flew to D.C., walked into this man's office with no appointment and said, I'm here from Jacksonville, Florida. I read this article. I want to be treated. Can you please treat me? And the guy said, the doctor said, you came from so far. I have no choice. Wrote him a continuous prescription for the drug Beniquin that is now called hydroquinine 2%, came back, faded the last of the dark spots out, and that was it. Wow. Still while wow. facing all the federal charges that he was facing. Nice. Okay. Oh, my goodness. What a story wow. right there. And, and more yeah. amazing stories from Ron and Baker Starsbury of the book uh, number 35 and 53, The Case of the Brown Paper Bag with Vinnie Moyle in just one minute. Get to that. You listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, brought to you by our official sponsor, The Mike Widener Show, international war ring author, Mia Molson Zia, also brought to, brought to you by Illuminiptical, the think tank uh, of the future, and also by The Sweet Psalmist by Serena Wagner, based on the book of David, available on Amazon and Heidi Tan Music. Check out her latest at HeidiTanMusic.com, including a special concert on August 25th in Los Angeles. We'll be back with the amazing Rodney Baker, Starsbury, and Vinnie Moyle, after this time out. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hi, I'm Burl Bear, legendary American author, and I'm here to tell you about Miss the new mystery suspense novel by Mian Mohsen Zia. It's really a good book. Very surprising. Never metaphor I didn't like, especially in this book. Here you have a main character whose life has been filled with despair. His wife died in 9-11. His uh, young daughter died of a rare disease. He's not a happy camper. What does he do for a living? He's a physical fitness trainer. When somebody hardly knows, somebody he's never met, he only has encountered them on an internet chat line, goes missing. This is his journey. He's going to go right rescue them. This is his search for redemption and search for his own personal promised land. He couldn't do anything about the death of his wife, the death of his child, but maybe he could rescue this woman he's never met. That is, if she exists. Missing by me and Mo Sinzia, international in scope, vastly entertaining, full of surprises. I suggest you get it, neither paperback or an electronic edition for your Kindle. Missing by me and Mo Sinzia. There's nothing like summer smooth jazz and R&B night at The View Music Bar. Join us Sunday, August 25th at 7.30 for a night filled with smooth jazz stars like Billboard charting artist Niels, award-winning songwriter and musician Michael Garvin, UK's top charting soulful artist Joe Levy, our very own SoCal's hitmaker, trumpeter CTK, and smooth jazz award-winning international charting vocalist Heidi Tan. Spending all my nights, all my money going out of the town. Don't miss this unforgettable evening at the View Music Bar and Lounge. Sponsored by Skin Protocol Med Spa, Fast Fix Jewelry and Watch Repairs, East Coast Artist Agency, Jazz Club Radio, Worldwide Jazz Radio, So Jazzy Radio, and 96.9 The Oasis. Tickets available on the Venmo app and Eventbrite, Sunday, August 25th, for a smooth summer jazz and R&B night. The Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Illuminatical. 
the think tank of the future, Illuminetico, a human think tank that brings scientists and engineers together from all over the world, has created a method to construct a renewable generator with this in mind. This unique product operates on a closed loop system that generates more energy internally than it needs to function. The extra electricity can be used to run everything from homes and power grids to phones and laptops. This power source is entirely renewable, highly scalable, and more importantly, self-regenerating. For more information, visit facebook.com slash That's facebook.com slash E-L-L-U-M-E-N-I-P-T-I-C-A-L today. The Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Serena Wagner's book, The Sweet Psalmist, now available on Amazon. This book includes 30 exquisite paintings by well-known and unknown painters and King David Psalms. The Sweet Psalmist gives us a new perspective on his life in this book. Through the Psalms he wrote, his time as a shepherd in the field is where the book starts, and it goes on to describe his complicated and turbulent relationship with King Saul as well as other events. It's a story of love, betrayal, repentance, and more. It also offers advice on approaching God and living a life that pleases him. Check out the book, The Sweet Psalmist by Serena Wagner, now available on Amazon, keywords, Sweet Psalmist, Serena Wagner. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back, amazing Ron DeVeco, Starsbury of number 35 and 53, along with Vinnie Moyo of um, Friday the 13th, Killer Clowns and more here on the Mike Wagner Show. And, um, you know, just a bit more about the book. Uh, what are some of the other um, stories that you uh, found fascinating about your dad, too? And uh, Vinnie, if you want to jump in, that's fine, too. <laughs> um, no worries. Just one of the things people did not know is he was a strong vocalist as well. He mm. was studying music along with me. One of the greatest things that I was able to do with him is I was his co-star in Gordon Jenkins' Manhattan Towers. Oh, wow. He was the narrator, and I was able to sing in the with the rest of the cast, and he was the star. And playing alongside your daddy, you know, that was yeah. awesome. You know, nice. you know, <laughs> numbers runner, banker, racketeer. He was a great daddy. Nice. You know, I I feel so blessed that Frank Baker was my daddy. Yeah, you know. I like that. Good old Chico. Chico. <laughs> yes, Chico. You know, <laughs> he, he always said, you know, Rhonda. You know, he would always have these little catchphrases, and I think that's where I picked them up. He says, Rhonda, use your head for something other than a hat rack. You know, he wanted you to think continuously. Right. And education was key. Rhonda, do anything you want to do, but get your college degree. You'll have that to fall back on and no one can take that from you. So I did. I went in and I, I got three degrees wow. and I'm working, you know, right now I'm still working at um, 64 years old and I'm working this business as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, have a, with that. I have a band. It's called the Bolita Princess and the Black Notes. Um, I'm working with some of the best musicians in the industry. Um, my MD is a gentleman by the name of John Flip Taylor. And it's, it's so funny how he became my, my musical director. Um, he would wow. always hang around my drummer. And I'm like, what are you doing here? This is a closed rehearsal. And he'd never say anything. I was like, who is this guy? Why is he hanging around? This, everybody was like, that's Flip. That's Flip. And I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> and so I said, Flip, can I hear you play? And he gets on the piano and he plays the Sesame Street song. And I'm like, okay, come on, guy. So I did a jam session one night at a, we call the Mudville Grill. And he came in and he sat in and I was like, oh my goodness. I have not seen this much talent between him, Jarvis Braswell and the other musicians, Dami Lippity. I said, I got a great group. Wow. And Flip just kind of set me down and he says, I need you at my house Saturday at nine o'clock. I've got some songs I want you to sing. And I was like, yes, Captain. <laughs> you know, and that's how he took over, <laughs> over my band. And it's just, it has been awful. <laughs> <laughs> it oh has my been gosh. awesome ever since. I mean, somebody comes in. So people are saying, Rhonda, Flip plays for you? I said, yeah. They say, you must have some pipes because Flip just does not play for anybody. You know, <laughs> so 
it's it's been a wonderful it's been a wonderful ride writing music with him um singing with him accompanying me Jarvis Braswell the good thing about um the musicians that I work with they understand the music that I like um they're classically trained as well and we vibe off of one another and that's the good thing yeah, it's like that's a, the ticket that it's a unit that's I mean, the ticket <laughs> it's you could come to my apartment and you've got five musicians sleep on the floor oh you my know? gosh it's because <laughs> this is what we do you know right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, I got Flip in my kitchen making banana pudding because he knows that's my favorite <laughs> thing, you know. So I, I love the music business. I love the industry. Um, the writing. I'm actually in the middle of a, a second book as oh, wow. well. Oh, yeah. Um, my cousin, Stell, who was a big, big, um, she was like a fan of what I was doing. Um, I have to be very honest. I lost a lot of friends when I wrote this book. Uh, a lot of my family didn't like the fact that I wrote this book, but they did not have a problem spending my daddy's money when he gave it to them. Oh. When he was, <laughs> you know, oh. uh, yeah, you didn't have problems then when you didn't have a car and you needed right. a car. Yeah, and all and, of a sudden things have changed. You're and right. Things have oh. changed, you know. You didn't have a problem when you couldn't pay your light bill. Mm -hmm. uh, calling Frank and Frank running his hand in his pocket because he's walking around with no less than three or four thousand dollars in his pocket at mm -hmm. one time. So um, that's the kind of person he was. He was very spontaneous. Um, I am not a spontaneous person. I am a planner. Mm -hmm. But it was once one day he said, oh, I think I want a Corvette. The next day he went and bought one. 90 days later, he says, I don't want it anymore. It's a lemon from the showroom floor. And he bought a two, uh, Mercedes 280 SL in 1968. And his troubles got worse. Oh, That's I see. Wow. Right. Because they knew that he was buying cars, you know, and he was using his sister who had a job, you know, a professional job. She was an educator, but he was buying these cars in her name. But they knew that it was him. And, you know, once you get into my book that's sold on Amazon.com, you'll find out that one of the most vicious things that was done to him out of everything was when he was driving down the street and a so-called associate saw him and said, hey, can I get a ride? My daddy said when he stopped and let, we called him doodad. Him get in the car. He said, he said, man, you don't have any of that mm, on you. He said, no, I don't. And he said he got two blocks down the street. And that's when the feds, county police, city police pulled him over, searched his car and heroin was in his car. Because oh my doodad, doodad had dropped the heroin down in his car. Oh, he got set up then. He got set up. Ooh. And it wow. was it was crazy. It was the worst 25 months that I saw my father go through. Wow. Um, and when I wrote that portion of the book, I was remembering it like moment by moment by moment and, and second by second. And that day that I wrote that section, I was writing and I started to cry and I started to cry so bad to my daughter had to come and get me off of the floor because I could actually feel what he was feeling Wow. When that happened to him and he cried and he said, how could someone do me like this about a car? Wow. You know. Oh, my gosh. That's sad. That's sad. And, hmm. um, but it, it's ironic how that case came to fruition and was over. It was over in 25 months. His car was returned to him. Uh, Oliver Kinsey uh, said, yes, I did do it. He admitted to doing it. Wow. But here is one of the strange things. Um, the cases here, federal cases here in, in, in Jacksonville, Florida, are tried in the middle district. They got a judge out of Pennsylvania, which is considered the southern district, to try my father's case. Oh, my goodness. So that was odd. And I, I did go to um, a judge here um, that went to my church. And I asked him, I said, 
how is that possible when we have all of these judges here in Florida? And he let me know. He said, Rhonda, a federal judge can go anywhere. So I think that there were reasons why that case was just brought to fruition and cut. And my father never did any time in jail. Never. Wow, that was something. Oh, my gosh. And that's on your book, too. Uh, Everything's it was a, in the no, book. Right. Yeah. yeah. Number 35 and 53 of the case of the brown paper bag. Where can we find your book at? It is sold on Amazon.com. I think Thrifty Books has it. You can go into Barnes and Noble and get the book. Um, it's it's everywhere. I mean, when I it's a great book. It first uh, released, it stayed number one with Amazon for three weeks. Wow. Amazing. Okay. (laughs) That's amazing. And we're here to check it out more with uh, Rhonda Baker, star, very best known as Belita King, the Belita Princess here on the Mike Wagner Show with uh, Ben Moya here with the book and number 35 and 53, The Case of the Brown Paper Bag. Just a few more things. What else can we expect you guys in 2024 and beyond? Movies. Movies. Um, we're hoping to. Yeah, we're working on a project. We're working yeah, we're, on projects. Father and I are going to get wheels up on this thing. <laughs> okay. Well, that sounds amazing. And who you consider biggest influences in your careers? In my career, well, my father's no longer with us. So, but my father was my biggest inspiration. He was that one that believed in me. Then my cousin Stell who recently passed a little over uh, a year and a half ago, she believed in me. And she said, Rhonda, there's more in you than you can ever believe. Okay. That's amazing. And uh, Vinny, how about you? Biggest influence in your career? I don't quite know if, uh, if I have a, a biggest influence. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I have one. Now that's <laughs> you know, probably okay. I don't, don't want to just, I don't want to make one up just, just to make somebody up, you know? Right, you know, yeah, and that's understandable. We've had a few people like that, which is perfectly okay. And what's the best advice you guys can give to anybody at this point? Oh, okay, you go first, Rhonda. Well, you know what? I live by my father's mantra. I don't follow patterns, but I will set them and let other people follow them. That's a good one. And Vinny, <laughs> how about you? Oh, you know, it's it's pretty simple. You know, you wake up in the morning and... uh you just take care of business, you know. <laughs> you just take care of business. Thank God. That's all I right, said. Right, exactly. You. And, you know, Thank you. never give up. That's all. Never give up. There that's, you go. I think that's a really good point as well, too. We're never, here with Rhonda Baker Starsbury. And, um, Follow your heart. Never give up. You know? There you go. That's right. We're here with the amazing Rhonda Baker Starsbury of uh, number 35 and 53 with special guest. 35 and 53. Moyer here on the Mike Wagner Show. Guys, a very big thank you for time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking <laughs> forward awesome. to it soon. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, keep us up to date. Great being here, my friend. Bye, bye, bye. Back Great here, Mike. Right, you too. And by the way, one more thing. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your works? Um, you can catch me on Amazon.com. Um, you can buy my book there. I'm under R Rhonda B Stands at AOL.com. All right. Well, so we check that out. And Vinny, what's your website? How do people contact you? You can catch me online at 7 Eleven pouring my coffee, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you might catch me in the, in, the, in the pickle aisle, you know, at the grocery store, you know. Oh, yeah. Hey, I hope it's sourdough pickles. Aisle. But hey, you I know. Sourdough pickles. <laughs> Dill pickles. You got that right, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know, right? <laughs> Listen, uh, IMDb, IMDb Pro, IMDb Pro, right? IMDb. Yeah. And uh, a- I'm on, you know, I have a Facebook page, and it's mostly all about IMDb and, and Pro and all that. And, uh, you know, nothing particular. I don't really need a website. You know, okay. <laughs> I don't even All have right. time to entertain one. I'm oh, pretty yeah. busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, yeah. go ahead. You're saying? Oh, well, that's that's basically it. IMDb, IMDb, IMDb Pro. All right, and, that sounds uh, all great. All those other sites. And, and, and you know, I got a Facebook site. We touch base guy. with everybody on. <laughs> oh yeah, that's and we got a good we got thing. such a great group. I tell you, we, it's like we all took over Facebook. You know, all all, all of us that uh, doing these movies all over town. We're just uh, killing it. You know, we got uh, such a great group of guys and gals that like to have fun and uh, and get the work done. It's it's just fantastic. It certainly does. I just want to say, Rhonda Baker, Stansbury, and uh, Vinnie Moya, you guys have been absolutely amazing. Looking Thank forward you. to having you guys again soon. Keep oh. us up to date. Keep in touch. Love having you back. Wish you all the best. And guys, you definitely have a great future. Mike, you're the best. You're the Thank best, you Mike. so much for having, for having us. Having much love. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. 
If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hi, I'm Burl Bear, legendary American author, and I'm here to tell you about Missing, the new mystery suspense novel by me and Mo Zia. It's really a good book. Very surprising. Never metaphor I didn't like, especially in this book. Here you have a main character whose life has been filled with despair. His wife died in 9-11. His uh, young daughter died of a rare disease. He's not a happy camper. What does he do for a living? He's a physical fitness trainer. When somebody hardly no, someone he's never met, he only has encountered them on an internet chat line, goes missing. This is his journey. He's going to go rescue them. This is his search for redemption and search for his own personal promised land. He couldn't do anything about the death of his wife, the death of his child, but maybe he could rescue this woman he's never met. That is, if she exists. Missing by me and Mo Sinzia. International in scope, vastly entertaining, full of surprises. I suggest you get it, neither paperback or an electronic edition for your Kindle. Missing by by me and Boston Zia. There's nothing like summer smooth jazz and R&B night at the View Music Bar. Join us Sunday, August 25th at 7.30 for a night filled with smooth jazz stars like Billboard charting artist Niels, award-winning songwriter and musician Michael Garvin, UK's top charting soulful artist Joe Levy, our very own SoCal's hitmaker, trumpeter CTK, and smooth jazz award-winning international charting vocalist Heidi Tan. Spending all my nights, all my money going out of the town. Don't miss this unforgettable evening at the View Music Bar and Lounge. Sponsored by Skin Protocol Med Spa, Fast Fix Jewelry and Watch Repairs, East Coast Artist Agency, Jazz Club Radio, Worldwide Jazz Radio, So Jazzy Radio, and 96.9 The Oasis. Tickets available on the Venmo app and Eventbrite, Sunday, August 25th, for a smooth summer jazz and R&B night. The Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Illuminatical, the think tank of the future. Illuminatical, a human think tank that brings scientists and engineers together from all over the world, has created a method to construct a renewable generator with this in mind. This unique product operates on a closed-loop system that generates more energy internally than it needs to function. The extra electricity can be used to run everything from homes and power grids to phones and laptops. This power source is entirely renewable, highly scalable, and more importantly, self-regenerating. For more information, visit facebook.com slash illuminatical. That's facebook.com slash E-L-L-U-M-E-N-I-P-T-I-C-A-L today. The Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Serena Wagner's book, The Sweet Psalmist, now available on Amazon. This book includes 30 exquisite paintings by well-known and unknown painters and King David Psalms. The Sweet Psalmist gives us a new perspective on his life in this book. Through the Psalms he wrote, his time as a shepherd in the field is where the book starts, and it goes on to describe his complicated and turbulent relationship with King Saul as well as other events. It's a story of love, betrayal, repentance, and more. It also offers advice on approaching God and living a life that pleases Him. Check out the book, The Sweet Psalmist by Serena Wagner, now available on Amazon, keywords, Sweet Psalmist, Serena Wagner. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.